Review code provided by Screenwave Media. God Eater was Bandai Namco's answer to Capcom's Monster Hunter. While the series never reached similar heights, it definitely garnered enough of a cult following. And now we have God Eater 3, which is actually the first game in the series not made for a handheld device. Does it fare well against Capcom's offering? Well, actually better than expected. God Eater 3 puts players in a role of a God Eater, a hunter of monsters known as Aragami. In this installment, the Avatar character, alongside his companions Hugo and Zeke, are stuck in prison following orders to eradicate said Aragami. Thankfully, the three are recruited by the caravan owner Hilda Henriquez, who tasked the three to carry a very important cargo to its destination. And that's probably the most basic way I can explain the plot, since the story is easily the weakest element of God Eater 3. Characters are just one-dimensional cardboard cutouts, and the script is benign at best. It's a shame too, because there's a lot of decent voice actors in this game, but it doesn't help that a lot provide just awkward line delivery. The pacing is also just... awful. Sure, cutscenes can be skipped, but even taking that aside, the most inane thing you do in the game is almost after every single story mission, you have to roam around the caravan looking for a specific NPC, initiate a chat with them, and only after said conversation is over, missions can be accessed again. Thankfully, things get a lot better once a mission actually begins. What sets God Eater different than its contemporaries is its speed. Characters are able to jump high and dash incredibly fast. It's more about cornering an enemy and barraging it with attacks than a methodical hunt in the wilderness while gathering resources. Characters can wield a variety of weapons known as God Arms. Those weapons can vary from blades to mallets, and each has their own unique benefits. Godarms have the ability to morph into ranged weapon as well, ranging from sniper rifles, shotguns, and ray guns. While snipers are good to handle enemies from afar, shotguns are good to handle close by fodder. What makes Godarms specifically unique is how they're able to transform into a living origami and devour an enemy to absorb its energy. If the devouring itself is successful, burst mode is granted where players can execute special attacks. Combat is incredibly deep and there is an insane amount of mechanics to unfold to the point it can actually be rather overwhelming. It's hard to practice many of the techniques during the missions themselves since the duration of each doesn't exceed more than 5 to 10 minutes. The controls can also be complicated as well, especially with one gearing example. The bullet link mechanic is used to enhance your allies by clicking the R1 and triangle button during ranged mode. However, a lot of the time it just doesn't work, and pressing both buttons together makes the Godarm change from a shooting weapon to a slashing weapon. The only way to use this ability effectively is by pressing L1 slightly after the triangle in a very delicate timing. One of the joys of successfully finishing a mission is collecting rewards, either by picking up items in the field or by devouring enemies after they perish. Then by going to the terminal it's possible to upgrade weapons, craft new gear, and also obtain some new abilities. My main gripe with this system is that finding the items necessary to upgrade your weapon is rather difficult. In fact, it's more worthwhile to just craft a brand new weapon since it also costs much less. Graphically, the game definitely has some bright spots. I do like the character models and the fact you can make your own anime protagonist is pretty cool. Many of the game's environments are pretty much post-apocalyptic as you'd expect, like dilapidated ruins or deserted factories. The only problem with that is that while they look good, they're completely barren. And sure, the game takes place in a dystopian future, I get it, but considering how there are many games that are depicted in similar scenarios have much more finesse to their environment, this is still rather disappointing. The orchestral soundtrack gets the job done, it fits, but it's not exactly what I would call memorable. In fact, my favorite music track in the whole game is easily the main title, Stereo Future, by the Japanese band Bish. The game can also be played upwards to four players, and it will definitely require a lot more cooperation to stay alive since there are no reliant computer control allies to heal players at a whim. In addition, there are also unique assault missions that can be played upwards to 8 players. Unfortunately, not only that matchmaking isn't possible with these, 
but they're also much shorter than the regular missions with less of the content. God Eater 3 is the kind of game that I'm really glad it can be saved by its gameplay. Because the dull story, the mediocre pacing, and the less than stellar focal performances drag the entire experience downwards. It's a shame because the actual gameplay is pretty fun. Experimenting with the huge variety of mechanics can be extremely rewarding. If you're fans of the Monster Hunter games and looking for something similar with a flair of faster hack and slash games, it's definitely worth a look. Just prepare to have a pretty steep learning curve to go over. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and until the next time, take care. Oh, <laughs> by the way, before I actually forget, if you're wondering what BISH actually stands for, it actually means brand new idol sh**.